Yo, what's up everybody? This is Junior Chicken here with another Poke Vlog. I've got 108 hours into Pokemon Platinum, and I just need a little more time before I face Elite Four, but I've still made a lot of progress, mainly because I've found a Wi-Fi spot that is compatible with my DS so I can link it up and trade my Pokemon so they can evolve. Of course, I went to Jubilife City to log into the GTS, and I put my Machoke up for offer. But at the same time, I was seeking to get a Machoke. Let me remind you that I did not know for sure how the GTS worked. I ended up finding a reasonable offer where I could get a Machoke if I traded a Haunter. And yes, I, fell, I followed through and I got a Machoke in return named Muscles. So I traded Shadow Dude for Muscles. However, there's kind of a glitch that made me regret the trade altogether. Apparently, if you put a Pokemon up for offering in GTS, trade another Pokemon in the process, then take the Pokemon you offered out, it will evolve if it can. So next thing I know, I got two Machamps and no Gengar. And there really wasn't much difference between Muscles and Champion, other than that Muscles had a bit higher level. So unfortunately, I made an error. Had I known that actually would have happened, I would have just put my Onyx up for offer, because it had a metal coat, and if I pulled it out, it would turn to Steelix and actually be good. So mainly because I spent more time with Champion than with Muscles, because I just got Muscles through a trade, I put Muscles up for offer instead for a Haunter of any level. I was just hoping no one would give me a Haunter that was like over level 25. I was also able to get the Underground to work for me. It's actually pretty simple. It's a maze where you kind of walk around the place and some places are kind of closed off so you might want to be in a different city to get to a different place within the underground but like you can touch the touch screen like you do with the dozing app and if you see a spark on the ground that means there's either a sphere that you've buried there or there's a trap that you want to avoid if there's a spark on the wall that means you can dig into it to try and find some items you can use a hammer or a chisel to break your way through the wall. While the chisel isn't as effective as the hammer, it is less effective at decaying it because there is kind of a limit to how many hits you can put up against the wall before it collapses on you. And usually with behind the wall, you can find mostly spheres, but once in a while you'll actually find something useful like an evolution stone, maybe shards or a star piece or even like a plate. Plates are really good. And once in a while you might even find a fossil, which you can turn into a Pokemon. But, unfortunately, I guess I have an even numbered ID number because I got a shield on. I really wanted the skull fossil, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. So I got the armor fossil. I did reincarnate it by taking it to the kind of rude museum guy, and I named my shield on Scat Face. Although most of the time I would find spheres, which were kind of useless, I was able to find quite a few heart pieces and a few shards, as well as some other items. There were some chances where I could get a plate, but I couldn't break enough the wall in time before it would collapse on me for me to get the plate. I waited about a week. Then I went back to the Wi-Fi spot I did before to log into the GTS, and thankfully, I did get my Haunter, and it evolved into Gengar! 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 And of course, I trained my Gengar up to level 25, and it was a bit easier this time because of the obvious stat boosts. The only thing is that he pretty much had the same moveset, so it wasn't like a walk in the park. It was still okay. Then. I decided to use the same glitch again, and I put Onyx up for offer, and I decided to trade my Scat Face, you know, the shield on that I got, and trade it for the other fossil Pokemon, Kranidos. I feel bad for the guy who I traded it with, 
because he's not going to be able to change that name. <sighs> Poor guy. Then I pulled out my onyx and of course it evolved into Steelix. Unfortunately, you can't rename a Pokemon once you've gotten it traded over. You take it to the nickname Raider, he'll just say, oh, it's an impeccable name. Instead of saying, oh, that's a good name, do you want to change it? So unfortunately, I wasn't able to rename my Gengar or my Kranidos to a cooler name. But I was able to change my Steelix's name to Alox. Combination of Alloy and the last letter of Onyx and Steelix's name to replace the Y. Alox. So my second task is complete. I have six fully evolved fighting Pokemon for my team when I face the Elite Four. Araman, Fiery Kong, Getsloth, Champion, Blue Beetle, and Killer Frog. Of course, Champion, Blue Beetle, and Killer Frog are behind on their levels. They're not at level 50 yet. So I trained with them some more till they got to about level 49, because I know they can get to level 50 if I take them through Victory Road. Along the way, Champion was able to learn Wake Up Slap, and later on, Cross Chop. Ha! And Killer Frog was able to learn Poison Jab. This became pretty helpful as it gave him an awesome physical Poison Stab move to go along with his great physical attack. Also, I've been trying to give my fighting Pokemon fully diverse movesets. So far, only half of my fighting Pokemon have full movesets, those being Araman, Champion, and Killer Frog. For Araman, I went pretty much all the pulses, like it had Mega Launcher. It's got Ore Sphere. <laughs> Water Pulse through TM, Dragon Pulse, and Dark Pulse through Heart Scale. In any other case, I would have taught him Psychic instead of Dragon Pulse, but I figured since I already had Getzloff, who's a great Psychic physical attacker himself, I figured I could do without. I might as well teach our man the Dragon move since none of my other Pokemon can really learn it except for maybe Outrage, but now that I think about it, maybe I should just teach him Ice Punch instead because Ice moves are technically better than Dragon moves. For Champion, I've got Cross Chop, HA! Payback through TM, which takes advantage of her slow speed, Thunder Punch through Move Tutor, and Earthquake through TM. That's kind of a story I'll tell you about later. For Killer Frog, I've got Poison Jab, Revenge, Urgh! Sucker Punch to take care of those Psychic types, and through Move Tutor, I taught him Ice Punch instead of Thunder Punch, because that takes care of ground and flying type Pokemon. For the other three guys, Fiery Kong, Get Sloth, and Blue Beetle, I'm going to need a bit more time. They're each going to learn a rock move through TM, but I don't have all the rock TMs yet. There's one more that I need to get in Victory Road, and after that I'll be able to give them rock moves. I did teach Fiery Kong Grass Knot and Shadow Claw, like I promised, but I feel like since the Starter's Move Tutor is beyond the Elite Four and Champion, I'm going to have to teach it Fire Blast through TM rather than Blast Burn. Get Sloth is really close to having a full moveset. Of course, I'm going to keep Night Slash and Psycho Cut, but I also want to give him a good Fighting type move for Stab, and of course a Rock TM to take care of Flying types. Blue Beetle, I'll have to admit, is the least developed. Of course, I'm going to keep Aerial Ace and Brick Break. Yeah! But he still needs to learn Megahorn and, of course, a Rock TM. 